What's up? My name is Tegnaba here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I've got a rather interesting video for you if you're looking to create yourself a website using fonts from Adobe Fonts. So of course, as you know by now, if you're someone who creates websites, getting a really good font is something that's important. Usually I would go across to say Google Fonts, as most if not all of the fonts here you can use on your website for whatever reason. Though of course the selection here is rather limited, especially when you start searching for specific font looks. But something I wasn't too aware of, even after a few years of paying for Adobe, was that Adobe Fonts is a thing. Now, I've previously used this for creating videos. I've downloaded fonts and used them in videos. But something I haven't realized is that you can also use these Adobe Fonts on your websites simply by getting a code from Adobe and importing it as you would any other style sheet. It's really cool and really simple to do. Of course, this video isn't sponsored at all. It's just something that I found out how to do. And of course, if you're paying for something as expensive as Adobe, then you should probably get the most out of it that you can. So of course you can search for whatever font you want or you could browse through their font packs. Of course, as you can see, 2300 versus Google's 1052. Though of course you do need to technically pay for these and that's exactly what your Adobe subscription has done as of course mentioned over here. So with that out of the way, all that you have to do is simply find a font that you'd like to use. For example, I'll pick the rough category on the side and I'll take something up here such as this one. After clicking on a font, usually it'll have a couple of different font types, thicknesses, etc., etc. You can either activate them one by one, or of course, click the button at the very top to activate the entire family. You'll see a pop up like this, which you can click Don't Show Again and OK to hide. Now, after you've done this, you may not be too sure what it's done. Well, if you've got the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite installed on your computer, it'll simply download the font, and while that software is open, you'll be able to use it in Premiere Pro, etc., etc. But how do we get this into a website of ours? Well, simply click the Add to Web Project button on the side over here. Then give your name a project, or if you have one that exists already, simply pick it here. I'll create a new project and I'll call it, say, Test Project. You can then once again confirm the fonts that you'd like to use and click Create. And there we go. You can see exactly what you need to do with it. There's a link to a style sheet up here, as well as a description of how to use the font down here. Of course, if a font has tons of different thicknesses, you'll be able to simply just use it as such and change the weight later on. But anyway, I'll go ahead and copy this for now and I'll make a new HTML file on my desktop. I'll simply open it in good old notepad and get to some basic formatting. Simply in the head of your project, paste in the style sheet link as such. And of course, all that you have to do is then use the font rules down here. So you can simply copy these and add a new style tag, for example, and paste it in here. Simply saving the test file and opening it up in, say, Chrome, you'll see that the font is then downloaded and it works as such. There we go. You can now use it on whatever website you'd like, as long as you're able to put that in there. And of course, subject to whatever the license terms of Adobe fonts are. Now, of course, what exactly does this look like in a browser? Well, if I view page source and click the style sheet link up here, you'll find some information about the actual font sheet itself. This is the public facing side of it. And if people clicked on it, they'd see something like this. They'd see a bit of license information, the font license itself, as well as a date published. Now, of course, if someone wanted to check a license for some reason, they'd probably be able to link this back to your Adobe Creative Cloud account and verify whatever they need to. As for whether you can host the font yourself, I don't think you're able to do that at all. It simply links out to typekit.com or of course, typekit.net. But other than that, it's probably good enough at this point for you to use it in your websites. As for downloading the font and distributing it in any way, I don't think that's allowed by the license, but you'd have to go through and read it yourself in order to find out that information. But it's a super simple video, something super quick that you may find really interesting as I did because I thought I had to use Google Fonts for a project, but I have the vast library that is the Adobe Timekit library or Adobe Fonts available to me now. That's about it for this video. Thank you for watching. My name's been Technoba here for Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.